If you're watching this live and you got questions, drop them in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube um, or on Twitch video archives or, or somewhere in the past, I don't recommend you ask the question in the comment. I'm not going to be the expert um, to answer these questions. The Path of Exile Reddit would probably be the first place to go to um, to ask some questions, if not the Path of Exile forums. Um, so, the first thing to discuss here, um, let me get myself in, is where to get this thing. So you want to go search for Path of Building Community Fork. Path of Building Community Fork, and that should take you to the GitHub releases. Path of Building Community, Path of Building, and then you can see as of uh, the time of this video, um, releases 1.14.170.14, and that is the book that I'm running here. You want to make sure you get the Path of Building Community Fork because there was a Path of Building. Um, and the original author is a very old tool. Uh, the original author retired from development, and so the community kind of took over and they update it and add new features and things as they get introduced to the game. So it really is the only viable option if you want accurate numbers and options in the game. Um, okay. So when you load it up, you'll get this screen, except this will be empty. So we're just going to dive in with new and the point of this video um, point of my tutorial here is just how to get started building your own characters it's not end all be all this is definitely not a how to make the most maximum meta character and, and crush all the content because you know, I don't have that figured out myself yet um, but if, if you've played some Path of Exile, and I highly recommend before you delve into doing your own characters with Path of Building, that you play Path of Exile for a while. Um, at least to say Act 6. Um, at Act 6 uh, is where you can unlock all of the skill gem options and just see what's available so that you have an idea of what you might want to make um, on this tree. This is not something if you've never played the game that you should start with. You know, basically play the game, have fun, play it to six, just specking whatever as you want as you go. Or if you want to follow somebody else's build guide, there are tons of them out there. Just just search for them, you'll find them. Um, go with that. But when you're ready to start making your own character, um, it's time to start conquering this monster of a skill tree. And the first thing to understand on this skill tree is this isn't one skill tree. Um, this is six skill trees all meshed and combined. So by default, it puts you up here at the Scion, which is really the seventh character that you unlock uh, by playing the game. Another reason you want to play the game some before you come here because you have to unlock the Scion. But the only thing, the thing special about the Scion is they start in the center of the tree and work their way out. These other nodes here, these big circular ones, um, are where the other players. So this is the witch. If I go down here and I say we're gonna start as the witch. You can see the witch uh, then populates in up here and then you start in um, as the witch and you build out the witch node. Um, so the first thing to understanding this tree is the witch is the pure intelligence class. Right? Use the pure casting, the pure intelligence class, mostly going to be driven off of the int stat. So you have int, you have strength, and you have dex. If you played some, you figure this out already. Then you have the Marauder down here, which is your pure strength class. They're gonna be a whole bunch of strength focused melee um, pure warrior. And then you have your ranger over here and they are your pure decks so this area all right drawing time ready okay so this area here is decks and we're gonna go red and this area over here 
is your um, strength and then this area up here you're looking at in so what that means is this area over here is your hybrid character of int and dex right and that would be your um i'm going to lose colors for a second we're going to pop back out and that would be your that is the shadow so this character of shadow would be your dex and int hybrid okay um and it works that way for the rest of the tree so if you look at paladin or sorry templar that is your um strength and int hybrid and down here at the bottom if you look at not shadow a duelist duelist is your dex and uh, strength build character so right off the bat knowing if the gems that you want to build on that are going to be int focused you're going to be up here um a lot you can build around the path and do a duelist that takes a lot of int but you're going to spend a lot of skill points to get around the tree to the things that you want maybe you go with a scion that starts in the middle that way you can kind of grab what you want down here and shoot up here um or maybe you go with uh, a witch and you grab something from down here tons of different ways you can build these characters in path of exile okay so other than deciding hey i might like to build a a ranger the next thing when i'm making a character or i'm thinking what i want to do is what major nodes on this tree am i going to want and those are your keystones so down here in the bottom i'm going to zoom in on this you can see this down here down here on the bottom uh you have a search bar okay you have a search bar also in game on the skill tree really important to use that so you can type into the search bar uh fire and everything that has the word fire in it will get highlighted so you can see all around the map um where all the fire nodes are you can also type in some keywords so if i clear out fire real quick and this note right here um this vow pact okay um is that nice okay. this vow pact um is a bit bigger of a node right than the size and um it does life leech per second is doubled maximum total recovery uh, per second from life leech is doubled so it doubles your life leech and it doubles the cap uh, but life regeneration has no effect right so this is a keystone right that's what these are called these very large ones are called keystones uh this one down here that's kind of below it sorry I, I sort of zoomed out but this one down here is called a notable and then you just have your regular old nodes um or the regular i mean they may have a name i don't know so you can not only search for keywords on right like i search for life leech right and and that will highlight um but i can also search for keystone and just highlight real easily all around the map where all the keystones are and i know if i'm starting as a ranger um that the ones near me are going to be the easiest to grab you may want to take a look at those keystones just kind of ignore the rest of the tree for the moment and just say hey okay what does this do perfect ag agony modifies critical strike multiplier and also apply damage over time multiplier for ailments from critical strikes at 50 percent of their value 30 percent less damage with hits the reason I start off looking at keystones and I think it's a good way to start is they almost always are a trade-off you get a big boost and you lose something and that's going to dictate 
the rest of the way you build your character, right? If I t if I'm taking this guy, if I'm taking perfect agony, if I want perfect agony, right? Um, then uh, from critical ailments at 50% of their value, 30% less damage from hits. Okay, so I'm getting more damage from critical strikes, but I'm losing 30% damage from my regular hits, which means I need to build a lot of crit right like the rest of my build needs to be like okay i'm gonna go perfect agony and i'm gonna build crit all over the place like my next turn down here is going to be crit right and i'm gonna see all these different crit zones and i'm gonna check them out and see which ones of these i want um because that's how i want to build this character um <clears throat> so Building out the character, let's just for example, we're going to take this. Um, you can just click it. And now it will just build out. Boom, 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 boom. Fastest way to get there. Uh, may not be the route you want to take. Right? So um, if you uncheck any point, it'll uncheck the ones behind it. Let's just say uh, these first nodes increase projectile damage, increase attack speed. Um, and this gives me a ballistics mastery. So if I'm going to go crit with bows, maybe, right? Um, down here, let's see what we had. Evasion and life nodes. Attack damage, attack speed. Well, attack damage, we're not going to be um, too concerned about, right? So let's just go ahead and say we're gonna take the um projectile damage maybe ah, attack speed more attacks more crits right um so all right to get to here see how it shows me the fastest path to get there um is to go that route and it gives me some stats about that route let me freeze the screen real quick and zoom in here Okay, it tells you that if I allocate the node um, Ballistics Mastery, I'm going to gain 20% Dex, 3 Evasion, and 1 Evade. One, ultimately, 3 Evasion is going to give me a total of 1% Evade chance. The whole route to get here, every node that I haven't clicked on is going to give me 50 Dex, 6 Evasion Rating, and 2 Evade Chance. Right? That's telling me everything to get here all right and the key points on this is looking at how much per point you're getting if i was interested in evasion rating i'm adding two percent per point that i spend on my tree so when you're comparing nodes you can look at two percent per point versus two percent two point six percent per point it might be more efficient to go another route Say you want to look at something, um, but you don't want the default route taken. You don't want this route. If you hold down shift, you can paint the route. Oh, that's not the way you want to go. Let going shift, holding down shift. And now I can't, I can't, uh, zoom in on it for you. Um, yeah, if I let go, it, <clears throat> uh, it goes away. But now, um, if I hold shift down and I go that route, and I sort of paint the route I want to go, I can look at the attack, total DPS I'm getting, 20 dex, evasion, etc. That I'm getting. Um, so that's sort of the basics of just spinning the nodes. But these values that we're getting here, um, it'll also show you if you deallocate something, everything you're going to lose. Um, but, you know, I can go over here and then get my perfect agony. But these numbers aren't very useful yet. Because this character has no skills to find yet. And it has no items. Give me one second. Excuse me. Okay, 
So it's giving me um, no real calculation on damage because I have um, anything equipped. So um, this is where a part of playing the game comes from. But if you've played the game some and you know you want bows, uh, you can come to the item screen here and you can say, okay, well, I'm going to want a bow. And you hit bow. And what it's offering down here are kind of your in-game goal bows. Like, basically god rolls. God tier rolls, right? They're perfect. They're six links. Um, they have everything. So know that when you stick them in on the character design level, that you're sticking in the hypothetical perfect build you may never achieve version don't use it for exact numbers but use it for comparisons of better one or better two and how you want to do your bow so like they've given me a bow that adds um to level of gems but more importantly they've given me an elemental bow and a physical bow so if i'm gonna focus on um physical right with my build then let's just go ahead and double click the physical real quick it will pop up this little screen here and then you can if you want tone up or tone down the stat rolls or even change uh what the stats are since this is a beginner video you know i just kind of bring everything down to like low to mediocre on the rolls right nothing's amazing so i'm not like pulling myself um too hard and then just hit add to build it will automatically equip it in the um weapon one slot if you wanted to go to somewhere else because you're doing dual blades or something like that you want to put weapon two you could um i know in the game that this bow is a six link it's two-handed bows are two-handed but you're allowed to equip um a uh quiver with bows but i could just grab um their sort of default roll quiver and stick that in i can come up here this list is a list of all the uniques um these are the orange items that drop in game some are more common than the others if i plan to like go for a unique or i want to trade with other players for unique it might not be too bad just to come up here and just say hey i want a unique quiver uh, and then look through the different quivers um, that are unique because they offer some things that might make me want to change my build a particular way. I'm not going to do that for the tutorial video here. I'm just going to grab this default quiver. I'm going to tone down the rolls so we're not looking the same. Okay, I'm going to add it to build. Now I have a quiver equipped. So I have a weapon. Now that I have a weapon, I'm starting to get total DPS numbers over here. But we need a skill. So in the skills tab, I'm going to hit a new skill here. And the first one up, I'm going to want something for a bow. Now you just magically know what um, of these gems that you can sock it in the skills are. But just like you can search keywords in, uh, like I'll grab in staring arrow, okay? When I hover over this, and it gives me again, this is the one. This is good. This is like the same description you'll get in game, All right? So, in snaring arrow, fires an arrow that remains in the ground behind its final target, tethering it to that enemy. Ensnared enemies always count as moving, and have less movement speed while trying to break snared. Snare will break if they leave the area of effect, and then it gives me the exact stats um, that it does. Um, and this is where like knowing more about how um path of exile fundamentally works uh you see the words increased here um and and less so um anytime something says increased or decreased it's an additive effect Meaning, this 20% will get added with all other percents increased. 
anytime you see less or more it's a multiplicative effect so this snare uh here will do 30 percent less movement to rare enemies if i had another snare that did or another effect that did 20 percent less movement to rare enemies those will be multiplied those will actually come out to be more than 50 percent it's not just adding the 20 and the 30 together it'll be a 1.2 result times a 1.3 result so the more and lesses are often better than the increase decrease i'll show you in a minute here how you're not really going to have to sweat that if you're using path of building because it can kind of guide you um in in the general direction we're just going to leave ensnaring arrow in um at the moment uh oh because well, i didn't show it to you the, the main reason for zooming in here uh, was to show you... Oh, hold on. Do it again. Messing up my Madden. Alright, here we go. Uh, the main reason to do this was to show you at the top are the keywords associated with this. So this is an attack, a projectile, an AoE, and a bow. Those are the keywords we want to search for on our skill tree to enhance this skill. Okay? Anything that talks about attack skills will apply to this if it talks about spells spell skills it will not but right here this is a bow okay that's a keyword we can come back here and say hold on back up search for bow now everything that has a keyword right is listed um this yellow here I'll, i'm gonna clear off this Let me remove that gem and start back from over and type in bow okay um kind of weird it's only doing that one but if i slot one in let's slot in toxic rain okay a different bow skill does a different thing i can get into it right now i'm gonna come back here and i'm gonna back that out and I'm going to type in bow again and see if... Okay, so right now ensnaring arrow is red. Um, it's weird because it's just an increase in mana cost. Um, I don't know what it's comparing it across actually. I don't know what that, uh, that comparison is, but... All right, what's barrage do? That's a bow attack. Oh, it's support. So we don't want support. Definitely don't want support in our first uh, one. So we'll just jump out here with uh, ensnaring arrow since we know it's an attack skill. This is what playing the playing through in the game is gonna, especially the Act Six, where you can play with all of these abilities and find one that fits your play style is more important than any number on the screen, right? So, once we have set ensnaring arrow, we want to make sure over here where it says main skill um, that we have that set to ensnaring arrow. Now that we have a bow equipped and our skill equipped that we're going to be using and it's our main skill, these numbers on the stat tree become a lot more useful to us because it has a skill and a weapon to apply these numbers against right um have there first all right so it gives us numbers to compare against that is the important thing right so we know we're going to take this we know we're going to need some crit right so i can see right now that I'm definitely going to want to just build to here through these nodes, right? Because they're going to give us some crit. Um, and they are crit with bow skills. So let's just go ahead and grab a couple of these um, and get all that crit. And then there's a whole bunch of crit here with bow. So I'm just going to slot all this in. What are these nodes? I could... So this is uh, fringy charges. I'm going to take that. You know what? I'm gonna take the frenzy charges because it's important. Get all these crit nodes. 
And then we're gonna come here and we're gonna build all these nodes with crits. I'm not really gonna bog you guys down right now with um, what um, is <clears throat> uh, each skill, all right? That's something to just stare at and play with uh, uh, as you go through the game. So now that I have a whole bunch of crit taken um, and a bunch of skills checked over here, I can see that my crit chance is 29.55% so almost 30% not bad not bad crit multiplier is 230% um, I would say at that point we're doing all right um, and that was like sort of like my initial like real obvious take these nodes out the gate um, also I want to see what will benefit me gym wise okay so like I know these nodes I want to take I'm gonna go back to the skills now and in this ensnaring arrow I'm gonna make sure my um, sort gems is checked here by combined DPS right make sure that that is there I'm going to change the support gems to non-awakened. Awakened, depending on when you're watching this, is something specific to Heist League that may or may not be available in future versions of the game. And there are gems that only drop in Heist League events. Um, so I don't want to count on them. I don't even want to see them in my list. But now that I have this ensnaring arrow checked and I have this sort by DPS, if I click here, You'll see green check marks by a whole bunch of gems, right? Yellow check marks and red check marks, right? Um, then you got these little pluses with also green and yellow um, and, and reds on those. So the check marks are all on the support gems. In fact, I can actually type in support here to make sure I'm only looking now at support gems, right? I want to boost this. And it's telling me out the gate, add cold damage, add lightning damage. Um, like these can add a lot of um, benefit to my build. I'm going to take faster attacks. Okay, because we know I'm going for crit, right? So more attacks, more chances to crit. I also know um, increased critical strikes here. Um, will give me more chances to crit. And if I take that, you see my chance to crit here is 45 now. So it's almost every other shot I'm gonna hit a crit um, at that point these are kind of things I know are good for me uh, based on the way I'm building it now that I've got two gyms linked in I'm not so sure what's gonna help so I'm gonna let the game start to tell me it's still saying add some damage here um, from any of these uh, abilities right is what it likes at best so if we go back to the tree right because it's recommending adding lightning adding cold adding chaos and poison and down here is added fire well okay go back to the tree if i say cold right where's cold at on the map well, there's some cold right by me. I can get a lot of cold damage right here. Uh, that seems good. Um, if I was to go poison. I could see that there's quite a bit of poison nodes for me to pick up. If I was to do fire, um, that seems bad for me. Right? Fire seems to be on the other side of the tree. Uh, not something for me. 
and lightning as well seems to be on the other side of the tree so let's say um, I'm interested in going with coal. all right those will be some nodes I'm gonna take what is this node lighting up here um, maximum cold resistant so that's cold resist that's why that one's lighting up Let's just say I'm just gonna all DPS this build here right now. Probably gonna die really fast because I haven't taken any safety nodes, but that's not the point of the video. We're just showing how to use them. So I'm gonna take all these cold nodes now. I'm gonna come back to my skills. I'm gonna drop this guy down. And now you can see the added cold jumped right to the top of the list. That is the best gem for me to throw in here and add on top of that. Um, so now it's like looking at concentrated effect. Um, I can add other types of damage. Um, cold penetration, just stack on the cold here. So we took some frenzy, though, so, right? Let's go look at the skill tree. We took some of this frenzy back here. Right. Um, plus one to maximum frenzy charge. 18% frenzy duration. 4% uh, evasion per frenzy charge. Right. Plus one max frenzy charge. Let's just search for frenzy. Okay. Um, oh, what do we got over here? We got an easy node to pick up. Master Trapper. No, Master Sapper. Uh, but it's trap damage. So it may, um, why is that even, pro why is it, why did the word frenzy even come up in that? I don't know. Oh, 15% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you have trap. We're not gonna mess with traps in our build, so. Our um, I can see that frenzy is over here a lot. I haven't talked about taking your subclass yet. Um, but. We, we had some frenzy ability, so let's make sure on this um, thing as we're, we're linking this guy out that we get um, frenzy in here, right? Now, the frenzy, um, okay, that performs an attack. I thought there was a frenzy support. Frenzy is its own skill, huh? Feeding Frenzy? That's a minion. The minion skill. Alright. So we need to figure out. I'm going to say new here. I'm going to add Frenzy. Right? So that we have an attack skill over here. A uh, projectile bow that... Um, Builds our frenzy charges, right? Perform an attack that gives this character a frenzy charge if it hits, right? So we'll do this attack to build up some frenzy. Um, and let's just go ahead and also support that with cold damage. And let's see, um, is it suggesting add cold damage twice? Um, additional accuracy. What's the enhanced skill? Enhance. Before it's a skill gem. Uh, once it's gem. Oh, that, that just levels up the gem. Okay. Oops. Oh, magic. How about... What's Barrage do? Support gems deal less damage. Support skill fire... Uh, fires... Uh, skills fire projectiles sequentially. The first skill fires three additional projectiles. Um, okay, that seems good, right? Less damage, but we just want to build up our... Um, ooh, and a volley. Fun, I think. Um, yeah, a greater volley here, right? So we, we're just going to send off a, a volley of, of arrows out. Just build up our frenzy charges as fast as possible. And then... We can use our frenzy um, 
over here right to um do more damage so while our total dps here is 68 if we we have to jump into configuration for a second right um because in this win in combat grid none of these are checked by default right so are you using frenzy charges yes we are check that off notice our dps jumped and we also got increased evasion from tree jumped in here um, because Frenzy can increase uh, our evasion rating. And I don't think there's any other skills that popped in. But numbers uh, go up. That's important for us to have it turned on. For when we go to the skills. To see what gem gets recommended next. Okay, that can change... Um, but concentrated effect up here uh, gets recommended as does Ice Bite gets up there. Maybe we just stay cold for a moment. Okay, once you have there's this tree here. You sort of have some basics in. Some basic gems go in. Some basic gear in. Um, to sort of understand how you want to get, how you want to build out. The next thing to look at is this show power node down here. Okay, this is a checkbox that has some settings I'm going to go through here, uh, down there. So by default, if you check on show power node, this will take a second. It's important to have the configuration correct for whatever additional charges or abilities you may be using. Um, on there, but by default, it does offense and defense. Blue nodes are defense. So it's telling me silent steps adds a lot of defense for me for my build. Um, and this over here, uh, lethality, um, adds a lot of damage uh, to my build, right? That sort of tells me the direction I want to go. I can change this here from this offense defense hybrid, which there are also purple nodes, which give you a good balance of both. Um, those are definitely worth picking up. But if I am just concerned about combined DPS, um, I can reallocate the tree just based on like, hey, just give me combined DPS numbers. Which, which way should I be building next, right? So that gives me some build ideas. There's also total DPS. So uh, combined DPS is going to take into effect all of your poison, damage over time, um, ignites if you set people on fire, uh, whereas total DPS is kind of the DPS that your chosen skill is doing, right? <clears throat> that is sort of the total DPS output that you're going to more consistently get, um, but not it might be higher if other things start proccing in general you know combined dps is kind of the way to plan it here um there's a lot of things that you can look at here life is is a good one like where can i get more life uh nodes here um it won't even though life is defensive when you're doing a single node power um it doesn't do the blue and the red so it's like yeah these are good for me to pick up they're like right next to my tree that's good for me to pick up that's right next to my tree and notice i'm saying now like it's right it's good it's right next to my tree right i don't want to spend too much effort right like there's some really good nodes for me over here uh but to get there is ridiculous right you can check this power per point option which now does the vision math that I was talking about earlier. It says, hey, to get here and all the nodes along the way is, I'll just read this off for you, 4.6% per 
increased average DPS per point, right? So that is 4.6, whereas this guy here is an average of 1.6 uh, to get there, right? So that makes it more intense. This guy's really lit up. He's going to give me 2.9% per point. So he's actually not as valuable. But then again, if you look at the route this thing took, it's kind of hard because it's covering up. It's not going this way. So if I really want to consider that, I need to hold down shift and say, no, go like this. Go bop, bop, bop it, bop it. Take all those. And now I can see going that route is actually 5.4% per node. Probably the next thing I'm going to take, right? And if I even finish off taking this, it's 5.1 uh, per node. I might just take that whole bow critical strike tree um, where I want to go. Now, maybe you want to just know what the next node is. So if you check both power per point and show top node, it will just tell you the immediate gain for one point that you can get, right? This is this node right here is worth 5.3% total DPS. It's one point away. If I want to know where on the map to go, turn off the power per point and just know the, the strongest node on the map for me um, is this guy um, over here. And that's not considering um, power per point. That is just total power in, in getting that node. Um, for my build Now we can talk about what ascendancy you might want because Once we have these um, combined TPS power per point um, Nodes well, that doesn't really work if we haven't allocated one here. It doesn't know where to go we can see of the three options here um, This one has the least nodes being lit up uh, this one has a couple all mid-tier right and one over here um, And this one seems to have a lot of nodes for us lit up so This can kind of help us know which of the three ascendancies We might want to take here and definitely it's looking uh, like this ascendancy. So that's this drop down right here um, That is the dead eye ascendancy for us here and now that we get the dead eye ascendancy um either take powerful precision uh, which is 5.9 damage or 5.5 damage uh fast and deadly uh but these you have to read at because they can give you some other things that are not apparent so like if i if i clear this off and i go back to frenzy um I can see that this guy down here is actually giving us a lot of frenzy and he's actually giving us 20% chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill 20% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a rare or unique enemy so that might be something we look into because it can change our play style we won't need to run that frenzy gem in a second slot and sort of cast up frenzy um, with one skill and then use the other skill to take advantage of it we could come down here and sort of add into our build um, taking those nodes maybe that's how we want to go um, but if we look at crit all right we can see that crit is on these nodes there's no crit down here for us. Um, so that's consideration. That's just something to, um, if we're satisfied where our crit is at 45, or we think we can get more crit from the tree, um, if we take all of these nodes out here. In fact, it's recommending that we go this route so hard. Um, we have this node here and that's sword crit. So we don't care about that. Um, what is this? This is totem crit. We don't care about totem crit um, Attack speed and poison chance not doing that not doing a channeling spell um, We'll get this note anyway So yeah, let's go ahead and take the decks this way and go that Just say okay, we know we're gonna get that We know we're gonna bump up that crit Okay um, Now that we have all that crit and our crit is 57 
turn back on show no power um, and see what that does over here if that continues to highlight kind of the same ones. So this guy here um, gives us a total average damage of 8.4%, total DPS of 15%. And we can look at two nodes here. I'd have to add them in. Can I just do this? No, we don't connect. Um, anyway, I'm going to get bogged down in this specific build. That's kind of a high level. Um, what you sort of need to go to get into this. But let's say you've been playing for a bit and you have a character, right? Um, let me clear everything off here. There is an import export build. Um, you can go through some steps. Uh, if your uh, account um, is private, you can go through some steps there to copy a cookie value in, uh, follow some guides online how to do that, or make your uh, profile public on the Path of Exile official website. And then you can get your characters here. Um, so I have a level 50 raider in the heist and then I'm gonna put um, Import the passive and delete everything and then I'm gonna check delete the skills and delete equipment and import uh, That so make sure you check those deletes if you've done some work if you're not as new But this will give you your character um, Where it's at in game and now you can use the power node and you know offense defense see bind offense defense let that draw in for a second um power per point maybe why am i not getting any red nodes bind dps Oh, oh, my main skill. I need to make sure I set my main skill to Cyclone. That's my main skill. There we go. That's why. Go back to Offense Defense. Let's do its math. Okay, Power Per Point kicked in. Um, and you can see, like, this guy right here is giving me a good deal of, um defense and some offense um probably something i want to look into uh taking uh same over in here i can get some defense and offense uh from those guys um as well but when you import a character you need to go back to the configuration i do not use frenzy charges on my build so i'm not using frenzy charges i am however using onslaught um, I took some skills that gave me Onslaught, so I need to make sure that is on. Am I channeling my Cyclone? So you get skill options here based on the skills that you selected. Yes, I channel my Cyclone. Um, is enemies near you? Yes, I'm going into the middle of the pack. I've taken, um, I think some close combat skill modifiers can do that. So it's important that you come in here, um, uh, and you check off anything that you might be using. So that when it does, I don't know if you caught that, but some are disappearing, some are highlighting again. It's sort of recalculating uh, now. Yeah, yeah. So now it's saying that these are kind of hybrids, whereas before it was just saying they were defensive. Uh, because I have Onslaught, and these also boost my Onslaught effect. Um, so that makes this a very attractive node to go down and grasp. Um, <clears throat> there. So this could be really good once you have a character to come in and say what should I build to next or how can I maybe even fix my build because um, at one point um, I was going for crit okay I started off going for crit like I had all of these right I had all of these nodes taken but my crit chance over here is only 15% and I was having real problems with mana which, when I searched the tree, I found all these mana nodes, um, which were right around all these great nodes for me to take anyway. 
So I took all these mana leech nodes and unspect, use some of my respec points uh, to take those because my crit chance dropped to 12%. Like it went from 15 to 12. It's not a big loss on my crit. It was huge in my sustainability uh, to be able to continue spinning to win um, with my cyclone. So, um, total DPS over here, like these numbers, 20,000 and everything, don't get obsessed on those as being like, oh my god, you're doing 20,000 DPS. That's with like everything proccing uh, beautifully. And if you come to skills here, I have a cast when damage taken node, right? So this procs when you get hit, and then it throws out a frost bomb, berserk, and elemental weakness. So that DPS is taking into effect all of this kicking off if i turn this off uh my dps drops to eleven thousand. right <clears throat> i'm not going to be hit all the time everything is not going to be cursed all the time so don't don't take these numbers to mean wow you're gonna do that in game take them more of a guide as to what should i add um back here right now i'm running anger as my aura so if I come into this box and I just type aura, I can see the other auras and hatred might actually do more damage for me or summon skitter bots might actually be better than running anger um, at the moment. Let's see, what is anger actually doing for me? Um, adds fire damage to attacks and spells, right? So, oh, but the key here is uh, anger reserve 50% of my mana. If I come back here and I search for aura and I go with uh, skitter bot, my reserve mana is that reserves only 35%. In fact, it actually told me to we'll set this back to anger. Okay, now that it's on anger, uh, we'll search for aura. I'll hover over summon skitter bots, do a zoom. And these are the, you might not have seen them. These are the pluses uh, that are showing me. Um, they're not support gems, right? There are different skills that have to be activated somehow. That's why they're not check marks or pluses. Um, but this will tell me um, negative 31% unreserved mana, as if that's a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why it's re re reading that as bad um, because like I get back 138 mana right um, on this these skitter bots also help my life leech a bit um, so maybe on my current build I'm gonna say all right we're gonna go to skitter bots now skitter bots are interesting because um, if you read the description here on skitter bots uh, they summon a chilling skitter bot and a shocking skitter bot, which trigger your traps and detonate your mines. I'm not using those. Um, but chilling um, skitter bot aura chills enemies near it, and shocking skitter bot aura uh, shocks enemies near it, right? So if these little guys are running around chilling and shocking things, then maybe I want to look into on my cyclone, right? Like I'm doing elemental damage with attacks. Um, am I doing anything here that supported skills cannot? Um, So if I look at taking out my, I'm doing cold damage here, but this elemental damage with the tags, if I click on it and look for um, hypothermia, right? At the moment, this is telling me this is a, a, a huge loss to take out elemental damage with the tags. Okay. Um, 
faster attacks. Take that one out. Um, and I put in hypothermia. Oh, I can't get a, de a decent recommendation. Looking like hypothermia is not going to be the answer with these skitterbots. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I forgot. I need to come over here and say, is the enemy chilled? Yes. Is the enemy shocked? Yes. Okay. Um. Right, I'm not going to put anything in there. So, um, they are chilled by the Skitterbot. So I need to check that on. That's why I come down here. Now that we know they're... Let's see if any of them... Ah, now hypothermia is a, is a consideration here. Um, over infused channeling. It doesn't look like hypothermia is adding damage, but it's reducing the mana cost. Faster attacks. Um, okay. In this setup now, hypothermia is worth dropping faster attacks for. Alright. Um, so if I go ahead and I put hypothermia in here, which, the reason I'm, I'm doing hypothermia um, here is hypothermia's effect is... The forward skills a 20% chance uh, increase effect build. Have a chance to freeze enemies which are chilled. Supported skills deal 29% more damage over time. And then supported skills deal 29% more damage with hits and ailments against chilled enemies. And that's back to the very beginning of the video where I said like more is a big value increase, right? It's worth so much more. Uh huh. Then increased uh, is so I don't really need to know that as long as I'm using path of building. It's telling me that swapping out my hypothermia here or, or swapping in my hypothermia for faster attacks if I run with the skitter bots and the enemies get chilled is um, a good option. Now another gem. Like, because I'm not running, uh, my un unreserved mana is 51%, right? Um, clarity here, um, I have a mana leech support that's not doing any. Um, clarity gives me, uh, it's reserving mana to give gems. But there is, um... There is an aura that I've run it before. Um, hatred now is, is recommended. Uh, but there was a... I'm forgetting the name of it. Let's just see if I search for chill. Bone chill? Is that it? Hold support. No. Um, no, isn't haste hatred. There is one, um, that the name is escaping me. Purity of ice. No, that's cold resistance. Um, There's one that, and I was running it. Arctic armor. Okay. Arctic armor. If I add in Arctic armor to uh, my my set, and I can toggle off the enabled here. But if I if I drop in, it seems to actually be increasing much too much damage. The Arctic armor. Um, for only 25% mana reserve. <clears throat> um, gives you an icy barrier. So, um, 
zoom in on this here. Challenge is an icy barrier that chills enemies when they hit you. You drop chilled ground while moving uh, and take less uh, fire and physical damage while stationary. Um, so basically, every time somebody uh, hits you, they get chilled, right? Which just stacks on top of our hypothermia. And I still have unreserved 29% mana. Unreserved mana is 130. That might be playable um, in my build that I have. So you can see how using this um, can give you some ideas. I think you need to actually play test this stuff and be careful because when I dropped this Arctic Armor in, it dropped it in at level 20, right? Let me just drop that back down to 10 um, on, on that. <clears throat> so um, it's not uh, overestimating the value that that may be to my current build. That's more of like an in-game uh, levels, right? So I can enable or disable Arctic, which right now just changes my mana. Um, anytime, if you want to see how all these numbers are done, you can hit the calculation tab and run through all of those with that. But I think that's the basics of uh, the tree. How to go in there, get started, what to start looking for, how to use it to sort of find um, items and, and how to read it. Uh, to work on a current character or make a new character um a lot of this stuff if it's not making sense will start to make more sense the more you play the game don't worry about making a bad character in path of exile because every three to four months the uh new new league is released a new season is started and everybody's character starts back over and everybody rolls new characters and they add new gems and they tweak some of the the nodes on the tree so um don't worry about like oh no i've made a terrible character um pretty much any anything you do uh you'll be able to get through the 10 acts it's not that hard to get through the 10 uh story acts to the end game um after that point builds will become more important that you actually have um, a good amount of increased life like 150 to 200 percent increased life from the tree uh if you if you want to be able to survive some of the in-game monsters is going to be important you, they they do hit you hard just to make sure you don't um try to get away with a glass cannon build um so that that will become more important then but by the time you're making it to end game you should have more of a grasp on what you do want to take and build into uh with that so yeah um I think it's about everything like i said if you're watching this video um on youtube or in twitch archives questions are better answered on reddit or the path of exile forums uh i'm not going to be a really good source of answering a question uh there's a really good path of exile wiki um to go through that also outlines all these skills and how they interact um, build ideas, you know, look at other players, uh, builds, there's a lot of sites that post builds, um, and a lot of them give you pastebin links, which there's a button right here to import from pastebin, um, so you can import that, or just paste the code right here, and it will import that, uh, import to the build, if you want, <clears throat> you can also, uh, generate a way to share, uh, so I hit generate now I have a code to this build and I can even share with pastebin which will just simply give me a pastebin link back um, So I can give it to someone that's if you don't want to make your character public or your character You know, it's a build it's not an actual character in the game uh, any character that is public um, You can import uh, Here uh, Just hit done and back out and type in that character's name uh, or their account name and then you can grab any of their characters as it start and find that so a lot of the streamers you know they're doing builds and everything like that you can come grab their characters this way of course they'll probably tell you around the site 
how to uh, get their builds and get their pay spins and everything if you do grab somebody else's um, link they might have filled out the notes section here and been real detailed about how to level up and what to take when on their build they also may have if i go back to the tree here uh you can ant manage multiple trees so they might have the in-game version and they might also have another tree here um let's just say new and this is like the level one to uh 15 tree right done so i can jump to the level 1 to 15 tree and i can um if i import oh no cancel hold on manage trees um i take this one let me just delete that one i come here and i copy that and i make this the level Uh, 1 to 15 3 done okay so now it's an exact copy but what I would do is say um, uncheck that de deallocate all of that uh, this will tell me if I hover over this the level required is 22 right now um, that can be a bit misleading um, as far as the level required number goes uh, because that can uh, count um, all of the um, like now it's level 18 level 10 requires level 10 uh, to build this node unless I say this is my recommended path that you start the build you get all of these nodes uh, by there but the reason this can be misleading is this is actually counting for um, awards you get from quests in there so um, is there a way to say I don't know if there's a configuration where I could say turn off um, calculating skill points. Hmm. Maybe that's a good question um, to ask. But just know that when you're looking at this level required to reach um, the tree that you you plotted out, it is like if I go back here, new, right? Required level one. I'm a scion, right? Okay. And I go boom, 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 boom. Required level one, right? And it's counting quest results, right? Um, we haven't talked about this, but over here, you can set the output of the bandit quest, whether or not you got two passive points or whether or not you took some of the skill modifiers. That's important for your calculation building. Make sure you set that. Um, and that doesn't import, by the way. Um, it doesn't know when you import a skill that <clears throat> that's what you did. So, if I deallocate that, bump this up. 15 there we go and put my points in here so I think I'm gonna say love required one yeah so be careful be careful on that um, plan to 75 to 80 as your final level uh, with that don't really plan beyond level 75 to 80 those are in-game bonus nice to haves don't try to max your level out here um and think that you're going to uh i, I don't know what the max level of the game is I, it may not even stop actually 
that they counted as saying 87. Um, I don't know what the final level of the game actually is. I would say 70 to 75. Um, is is a good start and then look at what you can add beyond that as you reach it um because those points are really going to start to slow down as they come in all right i'm gonna stop it here um appreciate everyone who watched uh right now we're playing path of exile on wednesdays at 7 p.m eastern if you want to tune in and watch us live muddle through uh, this.